Welcome back. My name is Satyajit Sahu and we are, we are in the middle of a lecture series. Which lecture series? Monsoon series. In this monsoon series, we are solving questions from your gate, the important portions for gate, for gate 2023. Okay. So, in this particular lecture series, we are studying what? We are studying now geotech. We are covering other subjects also. Before this, we have seen environmental. Before that, we have seen fluid mechanics, open channel. So this week, we are studying what? Geotech. Okay. So today's topic is your pile foundation in clay. Okay. Pile foundation in clay. And let us go to the list of topics which we are covering in this particular week. So in this week, on Monday, we started. We completed permeability in layered soil. Then we studied active earth pressure in cohesionless and cohesive soil. Yesterday we studied the topic bearing capacity of soil that was for shallow foundation and in deep foundation way, we'll see what your pile foundation in clay. And tomorrow that is on Saturday, we'll be studying what your index properties. Okay, so let us start the lecture but before that let us welcome our uh, friends so welcome Kartike, Amit Kumar, Mukul, Juhi, Rasmita, Bibek and Saurabhsi. Okay. So warm welcome to all the participants. Okay. And all welcome to all the people or students who are seeing this lecture recorded also. So a short introduction about myself. My name is Satyajit Sahu. I have done my B.Tech and M.Tech from IIT Khadakpur. I have been selected into many PSUs through GATE. And I have taught in more than 15 states and have a rich experience in GATE and ESC domain from the last 10 years. Okay. And I teach all the civil engineering subjects and I also teach what? General studies for your ESC. So that's great. So let us start today's lecture. Okay. Without any further delay. My health is little down. Okay. So I will be taking little hot water in between. So please don't mind. Okay. So we'll have some water and then We'll start the class. Okay, thank you very much for <laughs> this. Okay, so let us start the class. So, this is a pile, and pile is what? Pile is a deep foundation. Pile is what? Pile is a deep foundation. Now, yesterday we studied shallow foundation, and how we define a deep foundation. A deep foundation is a foundation where the depth of the pile or footing, I can say in this case, is more than the width or size of that particular foundation. You can see that this is the width of this particular pile, right? And here, suppose this is the top of the pile and suppose this is at the ground level. Suppose this is at the ground level and this is the length of the pile. This is what? This is the length of the pile. So I can say that, I can say that here, the length of the pile is actually equal to the depth of the footing, right? And you can see the depth is quite large compared to what? The width. So here I can say it's a deep foundation. So the pile foundation is a type of what? Is a type of deep foundation. Deep foundation. Now what we are going to study in this pile foundation? Okay, so piles are normally given when we have less bearing capacity for your silo foundation. Normally we provide it for clay. Okay, so we are going to study today what? Piles in clay. Piles in clay. Okay, now you see this is a single pile in clay. I can say this is a single pile in clay. Okay, now what we are asked in the examination, in the examination we are asked to find out the ultimate load carrying capacity of this pile foundation. Ultimate load carrying capacity of this pile foundation or I can say single pile in this case. So what is your QU? Your QU is the ultimate load capacity of the pile or I can say ultimate load which the pile can take. So ultimate load I can say in short. I can say what ultimate load. Welcome Saurabh Sri, Vijit and Aftab. Okay. So ultimate load. Now 
this particular load will be registered by two things or can say two resistive forces one resistive force will develop at the base yes one resistance will be coming from the base another resistance will be coming along the faces or i can say side of this particular pile so two type of resistance this particular load q you will face so two resistance okay two resistance one at the base other one is along the surface another one is along the surface or i can say faces right now this is the base this is the base i can say therefore i will call this as end bearing resistance i'll call this as what end bearing resistance is known as what end bearing resistance okay and the one coming in the side i'll call that as what your frictional resistance i'll call that as what frictional resistance so this ultimate load will have two types of resistance one is the end bearing resistance the other one is frictional resistance okay now this frictional resistance can be also told as what screen frictional resistance because it is coming along the skin or surface i can say right skin frictional resistance this i will give a name qf f for friction and this i will give the name qp p for your bearing resistance so now you can see that this ultimate load will be balanced by this frictional resistance and your end bearing resistance welcome bipul and welcome aki okay so frictional resistance and end bearing resistance now see this qu is actually a load it is a load so i can say your qf and qb also will be load i can say they are forces they are forces they are what they are forces so if i am taking them as force i am taking them as force what is force force is simply the stress into your area right so here i can write down this as the frictional resistance force as the frictional resistance stress into area under friction yes plus the end bearing stress into what area of base load is what load is your stress into area i just use that right so this is known as what this is what this is your frictional stress i can say this is what the frictional stress right and this i can say is end bearing stress it is what end bearing stress okay end bearing stress we'll come to that we'll come to that okay in some time we'll come to that the end bearing stress and the frictional stress but what about this areas this frictional areas and the base areas try to understand suppose this is a pile this is not a pile just just you know imagine this is a pile you can say this is what this i can say is the frictional area right suppose a cylindrical thing this is a frictional area whereas this is what this is the base area it's very common sense right it is the base area and this is the frictional area and i can say ultimate load is applied like this right it's the ultimate load is applied like this welcome vaskar and naman and diya ranjan also and survi also so this is the qu this is the frictional resistance and this is what this is the bearing resistance or end bearing stress i can say okay so we'll come to the stress values later on you see this frictional area this frictional area i can say the surface area right yes this is frictional area i can say surface area and this bearing area is the base area right now this surface area or frictional area and the base area will depend on the shape of pile will depend on the shape of pile or cross sectional shape of pile so we adopt normally two cross sectional shapes okay we normally adopt two cross sectional shapes the first one is what we adopt a circular cross section or we adopt what a square one 
circular one or a square one. So no need to remember the formula. If you know the basic things of geometry, you know. I told that your frictional area is nothing but the surface area, right? Yes, this is the surface area. I will write down in the bottom. Surface area. It is the surface area. And AB is your base area. So tell me, you only will tell me, I will not tell, you will tell. That if this is the diameter of the circular cross section and L is the length of the pile and L is the length of the pile like this, then can you tell me, can you tell me what will be the surface area? What will be the surface area? You see this is a circular cross section, right? It is a circular cross section. What will be the surface area? Can anybody tell if the diameter is D? What will be the surface area? is mentioned till that time I will have some hot water very good very good very good others also write down in the comment section what will be the surface area of this circular pile surface area of the circular pile see need not remember the equation you can just use your common sense Others also write pi dl. Very good. Surface area will be pi d into l. This pi d is the perimeter, right? This pi d is the perimeter and then length. That gives me the surface area. What will be the base area? Write down the base area. You will write down everything. I will just, you know, guide you. Tell me, what will be the base area for your circular cross section? For your circular cross section, what will be your base area? For circular cross section, what will be your base area? Yes, pi d square by 4. Pi d square by 4. So you see, it's very simple. Base area pi d square by 4, surface area pi d into L. Right? Now similarly, if the square has a side length of B, similarly if the square has a side length of B, then tell me what will be the surface area, what will be the base area. Please tell me what will be the surface area, what will be the base area for square. In one go you tell me the base area and the surface area for the square. Okay, For the square, base area and surface area. Please write in the comment section. You might be thinking, sir, is teaching so simple things because in the examination they ask you simple things only. We just don't know that things are simple. <laughs> what is the surface area and what is the base area for a square pile? Yes, Gorang is writing 4B square. See, 4B square. It will be 4B into L, right? 4B into L. Okay, very good. 4B into L, the perimeter into length, the surface area, and base area will be simply B square. So if they give the cross section, okay, if they give the cross section, you can easily find out what? This base area and the surface area. Then what is remaining? What is remaining is the stresses. So we saw the ultimate load is equal to the frictional resistance plus the end bearing resistance. Now the frictional resistance is the load. It will be the frictional stress into the area under friction. Area under friction is the surface area that we saw. Plus your end bearing resistance into area of base. Now these two we know if we know the cross section. Okay. So what is remaining? What is remaining is this. Yes. What is remaining is this and this. So how to find out these two things? I'll tell you. Don't worry. You see, this is your end bearing. This is what? This is your end bearing. End bearing stress, I can say. I can say this end bearing stress nothing but the bearing capacity. Nothing but the bearing capacity. Now bearing capacity is what? C and C plus Q and Q plus 
पॉइंट फाइव बी गामा एन गामा राइट पॉइंट फाइव बी गामा एन गामा नाउ सिंस इट इज अ क्ले द एन गामा बिकम्स जीरो क्ले मीन्स एन गामा बिकम्स जीरो ओके एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर एन सी विल बिकम नाइन नाउ यस्टरडे वी लर्न दैट एन सी इज इक्वल टू फाइव पॉइंट सेवन दैट विल बी एप्लीकेबल फॉर सेलो फाउंडेशन You see, D found this particular pile is a D foundation, and that case N C will be nine. So N C is nine, and this term is less. I can ignore this and make it zero. So simply, your end bearing resistance comes what nine into C. Nine into C. Now, your frictional resistance depends on cohesion. it depends on the cohesion you see this particular pile suppose this pile will be embedded inside what it will be embedded inside clay so on the surface of the pile the clay will be attached right it is embedded inside clay so clay will be attached so tell me between the clay and the pile there will be adhesion or cohesion between the pile surface and the clay there will be adhesion or cohesion please mention in the comment section that between the pile surface and the clay there will be adhesion or there will be cohesion there will be adhesion and that adhesion will depend on what that adhesion will depend on the cohesion value so i will write this as alpha into c where c is your cohesion Where C is your cohesion and alpha is your adhesion factor. Alpha is your adhesion factor. So now I can say the ultimate load is equal to alpha into C into the frictional area or I can say surface area plus nine into C into area of base. Very simple formula. You can remember this formula. by the explanation which i gave you very simple okay Th thank you pritam so now next thing is what next thing is we will solve a question we will solve a question okay so a circular pile embedded in clay having cohesion value 50 kilo pascal so cohesion is given to us 50 kilo pascal means 50 kilo newton per meter square length of the pile is 23 meter Length of the pile is twenty three meter. Alpha is given to us as point six. Alpha is given to us as point six. Diameter of pipe is eight hundred mm. So diameter is eight hundred mm. Find the allowable load on the pile if factor of safety is three. Now see, so it's very easy. See, so first of all, allowable load will be what? allowable load how to find out allowable load take the ultimate load and divide it by factor of safety see ultimate load is what how much maximum it can take but you will not allow that much now you will allow less than that right so we'll divide by the factor of safety and factor of safety is given as 3 so now this is equal to the ultimate load of the pile divided by 3 but for this to find out allowable load i need to find out what the ultimate load your ultimate load is what that is equal to the frictional load or resistance plus what the end bearing resistance now this is equal to the frictional stress alpha into c into area of friction here area of friction will be what it is a circular pile so pi d into l plus the base resistance will be 9 into c into area of base that is what pi by 4 t square Now next thing is just putting the values properly. So this is alpha is given how much? 0.6 radian factor. C is given 50 pi d. See everything you have to take in newton and meter, or you can say kilo newton and meter. So answer will come in kilo newton, right? So this is meter means 0.8. Length is 23. Okay. Plus I can say. 9 into cohesion is 50 then pi by 4 into diameter is how much 8 that is 0.8 square so 
what you do you give me this value separately first tell me what is this value what is qf what is qf you are getting tell me first the qf how much qf you are getting tell me separately how much qf you are getting tell me how much qf you are getting and this will come in kilonewton why you see this c is in kilonewton per meter square d and l are in meter so what is this qf coming tell me first of all then we'll go to qb and then other things qf you are getting 1733.3 i am getting kilonewton okay now how much qb you are getting how much qb you are getting how much qb you are getting i think some uh, 200 something you will get qb how much qb you are getting 226.1 okay so we calculated both and we are getting this values so now if you add your ultimate load will be how much will be 1959.4 kN right will be 1959.4 kN approximately we have done some approximations and that is perfectly fine now your allowable load will be 1959.4 divided by 3 giving me how much as our very dear aptav found out it is your 653.12 you are getting getting how much 653.12 i can say 1 3 almost i am getting understood this question so very straight forward question but they can ask you such questions okay now in the examination be little careful what care you have to see sometimes they will not ask you to find out the ultimate load they will just ask you what find out the screen frictional resistance if they ask you only find out the screen frictional resistance which is the first type of question they can ask so just mention then this is the answer the first type of question they will ask find out the screen frictional resistance or they will ask you the end bearing resistance right or they will ask you the end bearing resistance so second type of question they will ask so in the examination be little attentive that they are asking you screen friction or end bearing or the ultimate one okay so to see sometimes they ask you individually also okay so and sometimes they will ask you directly the ultimate one so ultimate one is this and sometimes they will ask you the allowable one so you have to be very careful what they are asking you in the examination easy is a very straight forward simple question now If you see this equation, there are so many things, right? You see, there is cohesion, there is alpha, there is what in this area, there is what diameter, length, side length, right? So what they might do, they might give the ultimate load, right? They might give the ultimate load and then ask you to find out any one other parameter, like suppose alpha, they will ask you, or cohesion, they will ask you, or they will ask you what the uh length of the pile or they will ask you the diameter of the pile okay so such questions also they will ask you the equation remains same the equation remains same just the unknown quantity will be different equation same in this particular question we found out the ultimate load but in the examination they might ask you to find out ultimate load or they will give you the ultimate load and then ask you to find something else let us solve the question on this okay ha so this is the question this you will solve so this solve this okay i'll give you some time so solve this okay let us see how many solve this question properly a 0.5 into 0.5 square concrete pile so it's a square pile 0.5 into 0.5 means what this is what this is your side length is to be driven into a homogeneous clay soil having undrained shear strength cohesion how much 50 kilo pascal so the cohesion is given as 50 kilo pascal the unit weight is also given okay the ultimate load capacity of the pile is 1000 kilo newton so q is given it is given how much 1000 kilo pascal 
the addition factor is given as 0.75. It is given how much? 0.75. You have to find out the length of the pile. Okay. So please solve this question. I will give you some time. Please solve this question. Let us see how many are able to solve. I will have some water. Thank you. Okay, Atta found also. Very good. Others, please find out. Some students are my old students. So they will be able to solve the question faster. If you are taking time, no need to become disheartened. If you are learning it for first time, it's very obvious that you will be taking time to solve the questions. So don't get disheartened. Aim is to understand the concept and solve it fast. Aim is to understand the concept and solve it fast. If you are taking time for the first time, that is okay. Okay, so no issues if you are studying it for the first time. Okay, so many students have answered the question. I will wait for others also to answer. I will wait for, thank you Vaskar. So I will uh, wait for the other students to answer. Okay, so let us solve this question. You see the ultimate one is given 1000. This 1000 will be equal to what? The formula comes into picture. Here it is a square pile. So friction will be alpha into C. Then the surface area will be how much? 4 times B into L. Plus what? Your 9 into C into what? Area of base. Area of base will be B square here. Right? So from here I can say 1000 will be equal to alpha is 0.75. Cohesion is how much? Cohesion is given as 50. 4 into B. Now, the side length is given 0.5 meters. So, 0.5 into length plus 9 into 40 or 50, sorry, 50 into B square means what? 0.5 square. So, this is 1000. Solve it very systematically. This will be how much? 200 into 0.5, 100. This will be 75 L, I think, right? It will be 75 L plus 0.5 square will be 0 0.25, 0 0.25 of uh, 50 will be 12.5, mm, 12.5 12 into 9, 12.5 into 9 will be 112 112.5, okay. So from here, your L will be equal to 1000 minus 112.5 divided by 75, okay. There's some error. Okay, so we're getting 11.83. So again, you see, it's a very straightforward question. You just need to apply the formula properly. You see here, length was given. They could have asked cohesion also, right? Or they could have asked you, find out the alpha by giving other values. Or they could have asked you, find out what? This width, right? Okay, so many, th or side length of the square pile. So Many things they can ask you like this. But the equation remains same. And how to remember the equation? That also I taught you. This we learnt what? This is single pile. A single pile in a single layer. Right? This is a single pile in single layer. Right? There were no multi layers. But it is quite a possibility that the pile might be driven into a multi layered clay. If it is driven into multi-layered clay for different layers, what will change? The alpha might be different. The cohesion might be different. Right? So let us see that particular case. Okay? So next thing is what we'll study? Next thing we'll study is a single pile. A single pile in multi-layer. A single pile in multi -layer. Layer. Let us understand this interesting thing. Single pile in multi layer. You see, okay, this is a single pile in multi layer. Okay, now in this case, how to solve the question? I will tell you the understanding. It's very easy actually. You see, this is a single pile, and suppose this is the ultimate load. Isn't the pile looking beautiful? The pile is looking beautiful or the layers are looking beautiful? Or the whole presentation is looking beautiful? 
I think everything is looking beautiful, right? <laughs> so, so this is suppose the ultimate load. Suppose this is your ultimate load. Okay, U U. Okay, now this particular layer, this particular layer or multi-layer of clay. Suppose the total length is something, but in the layer one, only this portion of the pile is there, na. So only this much matters, na. Okay, only this much matters, na. L one for the layer one. Similarly for the layer two, only this much matters, L two, right? And for the layer three, this L three. And for the layer four, I have to take only till where, only till where pile exists. So it is what it is your L four. Understood? So you have to divide the length of the pile into individual length, and be careful about the last layer. In the last layer, you will not take the total depth of the layer. You will take only that much which is there attached to the pile. Okay. Now you see, this is the third, second layer. This is the third layer. So here I am doing four layers. In the examination, it might be two layers or three layers or even five layers. Doesn't matter. The concept will remain same. So you see, the alphas will be different, right? Here we'll have alpha one, and then cohesion one. Here will be alpha two, then cohesion two, alpha three, cohesion three, alpha four, and cohesion four. The alpha and the cohesion will be different. Now, see when I'm finding this friction resistance. Friction resistance is what the frictional stress into what your frictional area. Now, the frictional stress is what alpha into C. So, it will be alpha into C. Now, what is the frictional stress? It's not area. It's surface area. You see, if you see the diameter here. Or diameter here, or diameter here, or diameter here. Suppose the circular pile. Suppose I am taking this circular pile. If you see the circular pile, the diameter is constant, right? The diameter is constant. Diameter is not changing across the layers. So I can say pi d into what? Into your length. Now you see, we have to take this for different layers, na? Yes. For the first layer, I can say it will be alpha one, c one. D will be same, so L1. For the second layer, it will be what? Alpha 2, C2. D will be same, L2. So can I say, I can take this alpha D common, and if I'm interested in finding out the total frictional resistance, it will be pi into D summation of alpha I, C I, and then L I. Yes or no? Yes or no? Alpha D C I into L I, where this alpha D is nothing but the perimeter of the pile, na. Alpha D is the perimeter. If the circular pile is circular, alpha D is the perimeter. So here I can write down what perimeter. So this is the formula to find out. Very simple, right? Perimeter into summation of alpha C and L. Because if you see the different layers. Alpha C and L are only varying. Only alpha C and L are varying. Very good. Okay. I will say something. You know, it will be little difficult to understand. Some smart students can understand. You know, in the diamond sub people are less. <laughs> okay. Next, let us continue with the class. Okay. Next is Q B. Now, what is Q B? QB is the base resistance. What is your QB? QB is your base resistance. Now see, base resistance will be here, right? Base resistance will be here. Now, if I am taking the base resistance, I will take nine into C, right? And then the area of the base, okay? Area of the base. The area of the base will depend on what? It will depend on circular or Square. Now this C, which one I will take? Tell me, which C I will take here? Tell me, which C I will take? Which C I will take? 
सी वन सी टू सी थ्री और सी फोर सी वन सी टू सी थ्री और सी फोर विच सी आई विल टेक सी फोर और आई कैन से द कोहेशन एट द बेस और आई कैन से वॉट आई कैन से द कोहेशन एट बेस द कोहेशन एट बेस See if it was three layers, then C three. If it was two layers, then C two. So I'm to tell you what cohesion at base. Now no need to remember this formula. Understand this. Simply understand this. Suppose I am telling that this individual layer of thickness. You know, suppose I am telling first one is two meter, second one is three meter, third one is two point five meter, fourth one is four meter. Okay, and the Length of the pile is given as nine meter. The length of the pile is given how much? It is given nine meter, suppose. And then I am saying that for the first layer, the alpha is point six. Second layer alpha is point four. Third layer alpha is point seven. And the fifth layer alpha is point five. And the cohesion values are. 30 किलो पास्कल, ओके, देन 40 किलो पास्कल, ओके, देन 20 किलो पास्कल, एंड देन अगेन सपोज 50 किलो पास्कल, सो दिस आर द डिफरेंट कोहेशंस एंड योर डिफरेंट लेंथ स्मार्ट अफ्ताब, ओके, नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल If I ask you find out the frictional resistance, please first give me the frictional resistance. First give me the frictional resistance only. I'll give you some time. I'll drink again some water. Okay. Find out the frictional resistance. Find out the frictional resistance. Do whatever you want. Do it. And now focus up the up on the class. Please find out the friction resistance. Okay. This method you have understood. Oh, diameter. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Very good, Karthik. Sorry. It's a square pile. Point four meter into point four. Point four meter into point four. The square pile. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Square pile. Very good, smart, and fast. That's good. It's very easy. First of all, it will be what I told perimeter into summation of A I. The last layer is four meter. A I. The alpha, alpha, alpha I. Then C I, and then what your L I. You see, for the first one, this length will be equal to how much? Two meter only. This length will be equal to two meter only. This length will be equal to three meter only. This length will be equal to two point five. But for the last layer, I will take how much? Tell me how much L four I will take. Tell me how much L four I will take. Please mention in the comment section how much L four I will take. How much L four I will take. How much L four I will take? Yes, very good. Because the total length is given as nine meter. The total length is given as nine meter. You see, so this length will be what? Nine minus two minus three minus two point five. That is nine minus seven point five, giving me how much? One point five. Understood from the diagram? Simple from the diagram, we can find out. Now the game is over. <laughs> Now the game is over. So the perimeter, it's a square pile. Perimeter will be four into side length, right? Yes. So point four into four is one point six. This will be one point six. Then for the first layer, point six into thirty into two, right? 
for the second one it will be 0 0.4 into 40 into 3 so this one last third one 0 0.7 into 20 into 2.5 right and for the last one it is 0 0.5 into 50 into 1.5 yes so QF, if I ask you just find out the QF, it will be equal to 1.6 into, the first one is 18 into 2, that is 36. Second one is 16 into 3, 48. Then it is 50 into 0 0.7, 35. And last one is 25 into 37.5. Okay, so when you are getting this answer, so the answer is how much? 250.4. You see how just by simple understanding of the things, you can find out these answers. No need to be having what? Too much of complications. Very simple. Okay? If somebody wrote the answer 11.83 now. Okay, so welcome to the class. <laughs> Something happened. Okay? Next is your base resistance. Now base resistance is very simple. 9 into 9 into the base area. Not base area, base cohesion. Your base cohesion is this, right? 50, right? So 9 into 50 into the base area will be how much? P square, point 0.4 square. That is equal to 9 into 50 into this will be point 0.16. So how much are you getting this? 1.6 into 5. 72, right? I think 72 you are getting base resistance right getting how much 72 right how are you getting base resistance 72 kilo newton you are getting 72 kilo newton so this is your base resistance this is your frictional resistance so total ultimate load will be equal to how much just add this to it will be 322.4 kilo newton. Okay. So you see so nicely. If you say two more questions. Suppose in the examination. In the gate examination. And suppose the same question can be asked as. The same question can be asked as. Your SSC JE mains question. SSC JE mains question. Okay. SSC JE mains. Suppose they will ask you 15 marks or 20 marks. Okay, you should prepare. You should prepare for both. You should prepare for both SSC JE plus GATE. You should prepare for both. Actually, if you are preparing for GATE, see, I'll just give some time here. Okay, so this is the end of the question. Please uh, answer that. Are you understand? You understood this question or not? Then I will answer Pravin's answer question also. So this we solved. Yes, and we saw that two types of things we saw: single clay, sorry, single pile in a single layer. And then we saw single pile in a multi-layer. Okay. Single pile in single layer. Then single pile in multi-layer. Very good. Now coming to Pravin's question that he is asking that. Sir, should I prepare for SSC JE plus GATE? See, I will tell you, I have told before also, SSC JE has two stages. One is your prelims. One is your GATE. Okay. Sorry, your ESC mains, sorry, SSC JE mains. Okay. Your prelims, SSC JE prelims is gate 1 marks. It is prelims 1 mark. Okay. The gate 1 mark is asked in the prelims. Okay. And your gate 2 mark questions. Okay. Gate 2 mark questions are asked in what? Your mains. Okay your means okay so if you have to, you are preparing for gate indirectly you are preparing for what your sscj indirectly you are preparing for what your sscj you just need to study what your aptitude yes your aptitude okay and aptitude also the syllabus is similar and some additional gs and some additional GS. So, Mr. Pravin, if you are preparing for GATE, 
indirectly you are preparing for SSC J with a minor addition of GS. That's it. The minor addition of GS. Because you see, this aptitude also is common to GATE. It is also common to GATE. So that means your aptitude and then your prelims questions and then your mains questions, all these things are common. So additional thing is only this GS. Okay. So I have taken a complete lecture on how to have a combined approach for GATE and SSC J. I'll request someone to put that link in the comment section. Okay, some student can put the link because I don't have the uh, method to put the link in the comment section. You can put the link in the comment section and Praveen, if you have seen that lecture, very good. If you have not seen, then you can go through that. If you have any other doubts or you still are confused or you want any other clarification, then you can message me on my number and you can ask me your uh, particular specific thing also. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So this was a short inquiry by Mr. Praveen and I hope that I have answered him properly. Now let us go to the next thing. The next thing is what? Your group pile. The next thing we study is what? Your group pile in clay. Now the group pile in clay. How to find out the group pile? Now how to study the group pile? Okay. Now, in group pile, they will also ask the ultimate, ultimate, okay, load capacity, not of the pile, but the group, ultimate load capacity of the group, okay, if your single pile capacity was QU. For the group, I will call it as what? QUG. QUG means what? Ultimate load capacity of the group. Okay. Now, you can find out this in two ways. Two ways. How? The first A is, you assume that all the piles in the group, they are failing individually. So I'll call that as what? Your individual failures. I'll call that as what? Your individual failure. If all the piles are failing individually, then I can say that that group, that load capacity of group is coming from individual failures. I'll give the name what? I. Q-U-G-Y. Ultimate load capacity of the group under individual failure. How to find out that? Very easy. If you know the ultimate load of each pile, then just multiply into the number of piles. That will give you what? The ultimate load capacity of the group under individual failure. Means what? I am assuming that all the piles are failing individually. Very good. Where n is what? Your number of piles. n is what? Your number of piles. Now the next thing. The next thing is, what is the next thing? The next thing is, I am assuming now that piles fail in a block. Piles fail in block. Means together they fail. Black fail as a block. Together they will fail. And that I will call as what? Q, U, G. And failure is what? As a block. How to find out this? I'll explain now. Don't worry. I'll explain now. See, this one was pretty simple. Like individual failure, right? <laughs> so, individual failure is very simple. That for one pile it is this much. For n piles it will be this much. Very easy. So, individual failure was easy. Second one is when they fail as a block. So, when they fail as a block... Then how to find out? Let us see. Let us see. Very easy. Understand the concept. Don't remember it. If you understand the concept, you will easily be able to solve. Now see, this is a single pile. Okay? Now this single pile, when arranged in rows and columns, will give me a group pile. Something like this. Suppose this is what? This is a group of four piles. It's a group of what? Four piles. Okay? And this is forming a what? It is forming a group pile. 
So I can say here n is what? 4. Now let us see the next example. It is what? Your 9 piles. Yes, here what? n is your 9. It's a group of 9 piles. So now you see it is a group of 9 piles and they are failing as a block. So you see this, are you able to see the block? The block is a square, right? You see the block is a square, na? You see the block is a square, na? Yes? And suppose this center to center distance, suppose this center to center distance is S. This center to center distance is S. Is S. You see, this will be d by 2, right? And this will be d by 2. So I can say, if they are failing as a block, they are failing as a single block, then they are forming actually a square. They are forming actually a square, and I will call this as width of that particular square, capital B, right? Width of that particular square, or I can say block, width of the block, right? Is the width of the block right and now this width of the block here in this case was 2s plus d right it is 2s plus d right it is 2s plus d i can write down this actually as this 2 is actually what it is actually the r minus 1 into s plus d this 2s is what 2s plus d is what r minus 1 into s plus d welcome salgar now this r is number of rows right you see r is number of rows or i can say number of columns right it's the number of rows or the number of columns yes or if you don't remember this formula by seeing also you can find out right <laughs> yes there is no need to remember this formula also let us forget this formula okay even if you don't know the formula by seeing are you not able to see or what yes you can see and find out right you can use your common sense so here this is what this is your width of that block this is the width of block this is the width of block and by seeing only i can find out this width now this whole block will act as a single square pile like this yes this whole block will act as a single square pile yes now this has become a block yes now this has become a block and they will act as a single square pile they will act as a single square pile suppose this is what top view will this is the, the 3d view i can say are you able to imagine now are you able to imagine now but how this group pile become a block right it has now become a block right a square block and i can say this is the width of that particular block so now if i'm considering the block failure that will be what the ultimate capacity of the group and i'm considering block failure i'm considering block failure that's what i taught told you initially block failure right so now just treat it as a square pile now just treat this as a square pile just treat this as a square big square pile right big this block you consider as what a big square pile right now the square pile this block square pile will have the same length right it will have the same length as that of what your individual piles just this side length will be different and how to find out the side length i told you width of the block or side length of the block right very easy now what you can do apply the formula it will be what the frictional stress frictional stress is what alpha into c then what then the surface area of the block surface area of the block will be how much simply 4 into capital b into l right 4 into capital B into L because now it has just become what? Now it has just become what? Tell me. Now it has just become a square pile. Khatam. 
plus your 9c the end bit resistance into the base area base area will be b square right right base is a square pile base area will be how much b square so so easily you are remember able to remember the formula for the block failure no need to remember anything just treat it as a square pile just treat it as a square pile with a minor variation if you remember when i initially told you the single pile i told that there will be adhesion between what adhesion between this pile and the clay yes pile and the clay right now here when it is forming a block here you can see here the interaction is between whom and whom tell me what is forming the block tell me the interaction is between whom and whom clay and clay or tell me clay and uh, the pile when it is forming a block then there is interaction between clay and clay or there is interaction between what the pile and the clay when it has formed a block you can say it is having interaction between what clay and clay so when it is forming a block so between clay and clay only your cohesion will be there or you can say the adhesion factor is 1 i can say so easy to remember the formula so i can say this is nothing but c into the surface area 4bl plus 9c into the base area b square so easily you are able to remember that means if you know the method to find out the ultimate load capacity okay for a single pile you can easily find out for a group pile so easy easy let us solve one question suppose i am giving you that we are having what we are having similar nine piles okay we are having nine piles nine pile group is there and alpha is 0.6 for cohesion is 50 kg kilo pascal okay length of the pile is 20 meter and suppose there are circular piles okay diameter is 0.4 meter okay and spacing between the piles is given as suppose 1 meter <coughs> <coughs> sorry my health is little down so i cut okay so now let me make some changes alpha c let me take as 40 Suppose diameter I'll take point four only, length I'll take twenty meter. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, my health is really not good. Okay. Thank you. Now, if this data is given, you see, so easily you will be able to find out the group pile capacity. Very easy. First of all, you take what? first of all you take your number of pile says 9 now for a single pile you can find out the capacity it will be alpha into c into the surface area now individual pile take for the individual pile it will be what pi d into l individual pile plus 9c into what pi by 4 d square so this how much you are getting for a single pile how much you are getting for a single pile how much you are getting tell me 810.53 okay that sounds logical let me also check a value 0.6 into 40 others also do 0.6 into 40 into pi d is 0.4 d into l okay whatever i'm getting i'll add 9 into c into pi by 4 into d square i'm getting 648.1 please check there will be some calculation error okay 648.1 kilo newton okay you have to take here alpha you have to take here alpha is 0.6 why because this is individual failure and then i can say the group capacity 
when I am considering individual failure, it will be what? 9 into that of a single pile. So, I am getting how much? 648.1 into how much? Your 9. I am getting 5832.9. Okay. This is the ultimate group capacity when I am considering your individual failure. When I am considering the individual failure, this is the thing. You see, it was so easy, right? If you know single pile in clay, you can easily find out for the group pile, right? Very easy. Now you see, when I am considering the block failure, then what will be this block size? This block size will be how much? I can say from here diagram only 2s plus d. That is equal to 2.4 meter because s was given 1 meter and diameter was given how much? It was given to us as 4 meter. So the block size is 2.4. Now if I have got that, the length is 20 meter. You see, you can easily now find out what? You can easily now find out that for this, the B you are getting is how much? 2.4 meter. The length is 20 meter. Now you can find out the group capacity considering block failure as what? Alpha will be 1 here. Alpha will be 1. Right? Because now it is a block. Interaction will be what? Clay and clay. So directly C that is your 40 into your 4 into B into L. Right? formula was what? The formula was cohesion into the surface area. It is what? 4B into L. Then bearing capacity 9C into surface that is what? Not surface area. Base that is what? P square. Salgar also found out the answer. So plus I can say 9 into C okay, into B square that is what? 2.4 square. So how much I am getting? Okay, others also found out. 9753.6 kilonewton. Okay. So we got this answer, right? This is so easy. If you know for individual pile, you can easily find out for group pile in clay. That is very easy. Not at all tough. Okay. So I got that the group capacity for individual failure is how much? I got that is 58. 32.9 almost and for your group file capacity when I am considering block for I got how much 9753.6 kilo newton when these are the cases okay you will choose which one always you have to choose the minimum one okay the minimum one you should choose and that will be that what that group capacity of the pile group Okay, okay, say ultimate capacity of the pile group capacity also I can say. So here it will be how much? 5832.9 kilo newton. Very good. Very good student. So thank you very much for all the students who attentive the attentively attending the class. Yes. And obviously you are getting benefited. So this is one of the most important topics for your pile foundation. Okay most important topics for the pile foundation we saw three things right first one was what single pile in single layer the single pile in multi layer then finally we saw what group of piles okay group of piles so thank you very much so let us see that there are some other topics which i have taught in your byju's exam prep if you go to your Baiju's exam prep and then you go to your learn with video lessons in Geotech and under the chapter Pile Foundation, there are some other important topics that is what? Piles in sand, negative screen friction, under rimmed piles, pile under lateral loading, then settlement of pile groups and dynamic method. So all these things I have taught in the Baiju's exam prep app. Learn with video lessons. You can go and see yourself. If you have any doubts, you can message to my number. Okay. Now, about tomorrow's lecture, 
tomorrow on 23rd of July, okay, 11 a.m. in the morning, we will have objectives of foundation engineering. We'll solve 50 questions in 90 minutes. Now somebody messaged me other day, sir, you are telling lie, you solved in 96 minutes. So I want to say sorry. Apologies that I solved in 96 minutes. So when I say 90 minutes means approximately 90 minutes. Don't take it literally. Okay. And then evening. See this will be short questions. It is for your HPCL, SSC, JE and other examinations. And 6 p.m. evening we will study what? Index property in details. We will study all the index properties. Liquid limit, plastic limit shrinkage limit right plasticity index liquidity index consistency index flow index okay then toughness index right then activity number okay all these index properties also we study what your relative density or your relative index okay so all these index properties will study tomorrow evening at 6 pm also we'll solve some questions Thank you very much for your wonderful participation in the lectures. Please do attending such lectures, okay, for maximum benefits in all the types of examination. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., yes, and evening, 6 p.m., on the same Baiju's YouTube official channel. Thank you very much.